Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Really excited today. I've got singer songwriter Holland Greco with me. So, welcome, Holland. Thank you. What's up, everybody? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I have become a very big fan of your music. It's uh, at times it's very soothing. At times it's it's uh, it it gets you kind of tapping or, or or you know if I danced I would I would dance but I don't so I tap. Uh, but it it can be very upbeat. But it's got that very uh, nostalgic feel to a lot of it, and I absolutely love that. Like when I listen to your music, it's it's very unique, but it also is kind of familiar, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that does make sense. I seem to kind of like take the best of things that I have enjoyed in the world, music I've enjoyed in the world, and add a little bit of like a unique twist on top of it. Yeah, it's pretty uh, great. And I was telling you off camera about the uh, grandkids. They are big fans. That's a, that's my test. I play some of the music, and if they start kind of dancing around, that means it's pretty good. If if they just lose interest and wander off, eh, maybe maybe not the best. Well, they definitely danced around. Wow, that just touches my heart. How sweet. Yeah, my uh, my granddaughter in particular was definitely. Uh, she was practicing some of her. It doesn't really go with the music, but she's practicing some of her ballet. Uh, you know, movements with that, but she's two. That's amazing. So I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That to, that to her, she's seen that. So then, when she dances, that's kind of what she does, no matter what the music is. <laughs> My favorite thing is when people like take videos of themselves dancing to the music, and you know, put them online or send them to me or something. Yeah. It's like the best thing that can happen. Yeah, I would if if I sang or make made music. I would love that. I would love to see people enjoying themselves to my music. That has to be the best. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen quite a lot of that actually over the last few years, especially from like pop and lock artists. Um, oh, people yeah. were doing battles like um, in Asia to some of the songs that I did with Funk LeBlanc. And um, so, yeah, it's just super cool to see people expressing themselves, kind of building on top of our expression you know yeah that's like amazing I, mm -hmm. I could get very into the dance challenges that would be fun i couldn't do them but i would enjoy watching people do them i know right i feel pretty free about expression it's just about having fun right like even if you try yes. and don't quite make the mark uh but then again i'm not a professional dancer so it just feels like fun to me <laughs> yeah i know it's so it's uh, and they're so talented some of these people that uh uh, that are really into the dancing, especially at pop and locking. I mean, I don't know how they do that, but it's amazing. Me neither. They've got moves that kind of defy <laughs> what I think is even possible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so Holland, I, I like to start here. Tell me a little bit about what got you into music. You know, how did you get started in the industry? You know, I think it was because when I saw shows and I saw other people performing, I was just so moved by it and I wanted to be part of that world. I wanted to be part of it. My mom, when I was a kid, she took me to a lot of plays yeah. and fine art performances and shows and stuff. And um, I always loved the radio big time. And I would be dancing around as a kid in the living room. And like, I felt transported to another world, you know? Yes. Um, and I kind of just like felt like I belonged there or wanted to be there, you know? So um, that's like where my heart started to be drawn and that compelled me to come to music. What was, uh, what were some of the, the groups or, or singers that you were listening to back then? Well, top 40 stuff. Okay. Like I can remember going into an ice skating rink and hearing let's hear it for the boy by yeah. Williams and just thinking it was like the most joyful most incredible song I ever heard. Um, I can remember hearing like Jody Watley songs like at a school fair, 80s songs, uh, Susie Q and like yeah. Prince songs and just feeling like 
like that they were on some kind of culture, like that they were living in a different world from me. And I wanted to know what their world was all about. <laughs> I, love, I love that you brought up skating rink. I spent a lot of years at the roller rink you know, uh, uh, learning to learning to skate backwards and shoot the duck and all that stuff. And you had the video games and that was a hangout for us uh, through through middle school, especially, but up into high school as well. Didn't that feel so good? Wasn't there like a certain magic, you know, uh, I just went miniature golfing with my family over the weekend and there's an arcade at the miniature golf spot and they had like black and white check ceilings and i was just like dude this place like still the aesthetic felt yeah. like it had that vibe simpler time yeah 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 so great i i we're i just i just ran into um the the woman now but but back then the the girl that taught me to skate backwards and we were reminiscing about our love of uh of the local skating rink which no longer exists miss wow. that yeah and you know thinking back to that you know as you're like swooshing you know over those uh nicely smooth floors and hearing the music like there's a special feeling to that yeah yeah what well, did you take some of those feelings from that from the from the state fair from from you know some of the school dances and incorporate that into the music that you're doing now I think so. I think that the way that I feel about stuff, like the magic that I perceive makes like my mind exaggerate my feelings yeah. a little bit. And when I'm writing um, a lyric and a melody, I can like draw on that enthusiasm and that uh, exaggeration of how I feel. And it kind of, it can build a world that I'm able to share. Yeah. Yeah, and you just had a single come out, right? So you had Flashback come out in the last week or so? Yeah, on Friday, Flashback came out. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. That's a, It's a great song. Thank you. I'm really proud of that song. There's really a lot to it and a lot that went into it over the years. And to be able to release this like final version of it, um, I could break that down for you a little bit too. Yeah. If you're interested in it. It's so cool you know I wrote the song a little while back and I was playing it with bands um with as a duo with just a drummer as a trio I was playing ukulele and I had an upright bass player and then the band kind of got bigger and bigger and we had like a real keyboard player and we had a real you know full-on thing and then I started to have like horn charts on a couple songs right and then I was like well let's put as many horn charts <laughs> on the tunes as we can because like if you guys are going to come to the gig you know you, we don't want you sitting on the sidelines like you should be playing you know so then the horn charts got arranged and created and then I, a couple people were singing and so I was able to write background vocal arrangements for them and the song just evolved and evolved and um after a while I felt like you know this has really surpassed my demo version of it I think we should make a real recorded version of this and yeah. Uh, so yeah and when we would play it live I was like I just love this song like I think that I should give it some love I, I should like kind of <laughs> present it to the world in its full you know form it's now that it's all like come together um so yeah it's it's a lot of uh different stages of my creativity being shown at one time which is nice for me yeah I, I love it because when you listen to it like I kept trying to think, I you know, I was I was like, I this seems familiar. I've I've heard and I kept trying, but I couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around it because it's it, even though it 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 seems familiar, it's new. And and I think that was such a unique kind of fun feeling because it was it was like I couldn't get a hold of what I was feeling, but I knew I liked it. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but it just, it felt so familiar, but it wasn't like, I couldn't, I was like, I, it, it sounds like, and I never could pin it down. It's really neat. That's so nice. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I'm a big fan of like kind of classic songwriters. So there, maybe it has yeah. a little bit of classic feeling to it and then also modern. Oh, definitely. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, it's just, it's really good. So is the plan to at some point have that as part of a, like a larger album? I think so. I've been thinking about that recently. Um, I do have a few other songs recorded. And I think the next thing to do is just to put out a whole body of work, like just to put that record out. Yeah. Because there's also a thing where you want to just put it out so that I can move on, you know, I'll write the next thing. Um, but I'll tell you what, releasing music is uh, a lot of work. So I want to just like kind of <laughs> think about it a little bit, like reimagine right. what the next cycle is going to be like. But I'd like to put out the album, I don't know, maybe sometime this year or within the next year. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. Is there a, a video with Flashback? Yes, we made a music video and we're just doing a final edit on it. And that'll be out in July. Ooh, that's a, yeah, that's exciting. Is it is it easier writing the music or putting together the music video? Mm, they each have their own like special <laughs> things that need to occur. Like yeah. I think that my favorite thing is having written a song that I love because it's like, ooh, this is like the seed of so many things that can come after. You know, you, right. once you write a song that you love, you can play it a million times on stage. It, they live forever. They like once you've created something like that, it, it's kind of like everything else you do is just backing that up. Um, and and I think my first love is songwriting anyway. So maybe it just feels that way to me. Uh, making a music video is uh, an interesting experience. I had some good fortune. Uh, director approached me and wanting to make a video. And yeah. his name is... Um, Nick Benjamin, and he brought in a whole team of people who were really helpful to me. You know, people who are good yeah. at making film are good at making film, and people who are good at songwriting are good at songwriting. And then you kind of bring <laughs> the world together and you get the benefit of everybody's expertise. So I learn a lot um, when I dabble in in video because uh, it's not my my first thing, you know, it's not like my first right. language. <laughs> yeah, so, well, that makes sense. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you make videos, do you bring in friends or family to to like do a cameo in the uh, in the video? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, um, my brother came with me to both of my video shoots in the last uh, six weeks or so, and that was great. And he did do a little cameo in uh, the SEXY video just because we were like doing this one thing. There needed to be two of us. And after I saw the footage, I'm like. I don't even think we need to move the frame to like just what our hands are doing. I'm like, I think it's kind of cool to see us both, you know, yeah. having fun together. I have a really good vibe with my brother. So he came and took pictures and hung out with me. And that made me, you know, feel strong. It's nice to have family. Yeah, around. yeah, it absolutely is. And I would totally do that. If I was making a video, I would definitely probably include uh, friends and family in some in some little little role. I think it'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, totally. Or like the drummer on Flashback is one of my dearest, oldest friends, Princess Frank. And he yeah. didn't play on SEXY, but like some of the other band members weren't available to do the video. And I was like, why don't you be in it? Like be in it. And so he does have a cameo. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's really neat. That's really neat. So I wanted to ask you, because I know you've done music for like cartoons, which I think yes. is so cool because, you know, I'm nerdy big cartoon guy um but tell me how that came about so because i know you did some of the vocals for scoop uh, scooby-doo the the vampire one yes and you had the uh the yellow bird song on the looney tunes show which they're both i'm really good but how did those come about well those come about when you're like the luckiest person in the world and you get a phone <laughs> call from the person who's like casting that saying hey, you know, are you available for this thing? We think we'd, you'd be great for it. So <laughs> like, that's kind of how that works. Uh, but people have to know about you, you know? Um, yeah. And I do have a vocal reel and I try to like put the materials out there. So if I am right for anything that people can kind of see what I do, hear what I do and and call me, you know? And that's, that's how that happens. Those are just like the luckiest breaks ever. And I'm so happy to, I'm a nerd for it. And um, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Well, how does that work? Does does singing a song on a show, does that count as acting? 
I mean, do you get credit as an actor or are you credited just as a musician? Credited as a singer, um, you know, SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union also represents union singers. And okay. so, yeah, so I am a, a member of SAG-AFTRA as a, as pr a singer primarily. I've worked a little bit as an actor, but it's not my thing. Well, that was, that was kind of what I was getting at. I was curious if that, you know, if that got you into uh, to SAG. So that's, that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. There's a, you know, and uh, dancers too are union. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's kind of kind of neat. And I wanted to ask you, because I know you did um, some work on like um, uh, the Planet of the Apes movie, the yes. uh, Rogue One and yes. some of those. And it's called a score vocalist. So what does that what is a score vocalist? Well, the score vocalist is, um, you know, you know how it is in a movie when you hear a choir and those big yeah. oohs and ahs and swells and stuff like that. Those yep. choir parts and the scores for the choir are written by the composer. And like, it's like, you know, soprano, second soprano, alto, second alto, tenor, second tenor, third tenor, whatever. All these parts of the choir, the choral yeah. instrument, the vocal instrument, um, all that's written out and they bring in like, you know, groups of us to read that stuff down and sing it for the movies. And like, they're really incredible experiences. You know, you go into the room and it's a big sound stage and they have a giant, um, you know, projected image of the movie and that's behind you. And you, the whole choir is like singing to the picture, reading hey the composer's score for vocals. So yeah, that's how that works. That's so neat. The, and I, I get that, like um, Star Trek Beyond, you know, I remember, you know, some of those uh, arrangements and that that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Is that something, do you try out for it like you would try out for an acting role? Um, no, the contractors, the vocal contractors will call you to do it. Oh, okay. And they're big choirs usually. I mean, those ones that you mentioned, 60 singers. Wow. Maybe 60 to 80, something like that. That has to be a blast. It's like um, doing uh, all county chorus, but on a huge scale. Yes. Yeah, people who have been doing choir their whole lives and like maybe didn't do pop and rock and roll are really good at that. Yeah. Because they're yeah, that's a skill. That's a skill. And they're used to reading and they're used to blending and, uh, you know, being able to hold their own part in the face of hearing many parts mm -hmm. at the same time, all like moving. And yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, I think that's so neat. You know, if you had a, a preference, if you could only do one, would you prefer to, to sing or songwrite? Whew. I, um, I would I choose songwriting. I, I thought you would say that. Yeah. More, um, I don't know. I was going to say more expressive, but I don't know that it it is. Maybe more creative, maybe. I think, I just think it's the better of my two gifts. You know, yes. I, I love to sing and it's great to be able to express myself. And like music is for everybody. Like even singing covers of things is a blast. But my biggest fulfillment is writing songs. And, um, and I think it's the the better of my my skills you know something that i yeah. yeah like i mean even tomorrow if if somebody awesome was like i want to cut your song and you you can't sing it i'd be like yeah i think that's fine i think you should do it <laughs> you know? See, i don't know if i could do that i'd be like i don't know that's my song <laughs> yeah but it would at the same time it would be pretty awesome to hear somebody singing your music Absolutely. And like when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's not like they would say you can never sing it. They're just like, you know, maybe don't put out like a competing record at the same right. time, you know, <laughs> like Carol King wrote Natural Woman, but she still put it out on Tapestry and they're totally yeah. different recordings. Yeah. 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 That's pretty. That's pretty great. Have you written music for for other singers or musicians? No, not really. That's something I would. I would like to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that would be uh, uh, kind of neat. And usually, you know, it seems like you have people that start. That's how they start. They're writing for other people. And then at some point they they write it for themselves. Yes. Yeah, totally. I know. It's interesting. I've, I Maybe my portfolio, my work will will go in the other direction. We'll maybe have somebody call me to write something for them. I have like a little 12 bar blues song called fool around that I would love for somebody to cut. I think that, you know, Gwen Stefani has been getting into country and stuff Ooh, like that. I'm yeah. like, maybe she should cut my little 12 bar blues song. Cause I feel like I have some similarities with her sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's exactly right. That's uh, oh, that'd be great. I know. Right. Yes. That'd be so cool. I, I get though why maybe that hasn't happened yet because your voice is so good on its on its own that oh. i think that would be difficult you know for you know you're probably getting listened to and people are going well she sounds great i'm not gonna do that <laughs> right i know you know behind the scenes like uh, there's a girl cara diaguardi and she wrote since you've been gone um, oh. And if you, when you hear her demo, she sounds rocking. She's totally rocking. But of course, yeah. like Kelly Clarkson's version is amazing. So oh, it's amazing. The, you know, the demo people do sound great. Or like Lady Gaga used to write for other people or Missy Elliott. And, you know, yeah. just depends. I think if you love what you're doing, maybe it doesn't matter as much. Yeah, definitely. Right kind of just want to like find a, a home for these pieces of art and like the best home. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. You know, sometimes you're the, you're the best place or the best uh, person to, to interpret it. Sometimes maybe it's somebody else, but it's still your art. I, I, I think that's, I think I'm coming around. Maybe I could let people sing my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about your uh, double album, Volume One. Oh my gosh! Right? Yeah, yeah I've, that's the one I've I've been really been listening to, and I love the. It's very um, almost light versus dark. Yes, you know, like two completely different sides on the uh, the. I love both. Um, oh gosh, cool! Thank but you. But was that the intention? Was to do something where you know each part of the album is like the opposite of each other? It wasn't um, orchestrated that way, but because of the like multifaceted nature of my creativity, it kind of just happened like where I made one EP of originals and then I made another one of these Misfits covers. And so like putting them together became what that was. And it's just sort of an authentic expression of like different parts of me. Oh yeah, it's it's terrific. It's terrific. The Misfit stuff, uh, really fun. It looked like, like, like it reminded me of stuff you would hear in like um, the the Grindhouse movies or the Tarantino movies, something like Hell, that. Yeah. Hell yeah! With the Misfit stuff, we were really going for that. I was like, you know what? would Salma Hayek be dancing to in that yes. bar and from dusk till dawn, you know, just like, yeah, I was really, really going for that. And so we, we leaned into that idea. And I think that we came up with some cool, like sonic uh, aesthetics to bring us there. I mean, you're commenting on that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. And then on the, on the other side, um, you know, it's, it's very. It's kind of got that nostalgic feel. It's got a lot of a uh, lot of brass, and uh, uh, I don't. I, I'm the worst with uh, music, but it sounded like maybe uh, some uh, some stand up bass and and stuff in there is really good. Oh my gosh! Yeah, in American Nightmare, the bass player used a bow to play on his bass, like that oh, wow. solo that sounds like. I don't know, it sounds like a sea orca or something. Just raw. Um, <laughs> that's a bowed bass, and he played that beautifully. It's like beautiful and menacing. Yeah. 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 I, I know exactly what uh what you're saying, and that's exactly what it was. I played some of it for my uh stepson, who's a musician, and he was going nuts 
for it because he he really gets what he's listening to. Where I can listen to it, and I'm like, oh, that was really good. He can pick out the different you know elements of it and and know you know what instruments playing and that type of stuff. And he just absolutely loved it. He was going nuts over it. So I know oh, it's good. So if, cool. if it's got his approval, it's good. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Right on. Give him a high five for me, please. <laughs> what was it like, you know, the first time that you heard something of yours, you know, I'd, I'd say on a radio, but whatever it was on, on the internet or just somewhere outside of the studio. Um, what do you mean? Like when I, I heard something in, in what sort of way, like something, well, oh, like, like, like something, something that, yeah, something that you've created or that you sang and you were out somewhere and you, you heard somebody playing it or, you know, used to be that stuff. You would, you know, the scene where you'd have the musicians and they'd hear their song come on the radio and they would get all excited about. It. Did you have one of those moments with any of your songs where you were, you know, somebody else was playing it and you just happened to be there? Yeah, a couple of things recently have happened that were really cool. Um and I don't know how these things happen. It's like, I bet it's the best magic in the world, right? Um, I had a friend who was in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay and they took a yeah. video and like just in the lobby there, Real Love was playing uh, the song that I did with Funk LeBlanc recently. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know why, but there we were in Las Vegas and that was really cool to me. Um, same song. Now this is a really good one. I sort of like, you know, I look at YouTube and I like kind of look at the comments and stuff like that right. and like follow the rabbit hole. Um, there was a late night show this somewhere in, in Russia, I believe. And they, on their late night program, performed it live. No way. And, and it was a whole other band doing it. And it was a male lead singer sounding great, amazing. Um, and they did a really good job with it. And I, that kind of blew me away. Yeah, that would get me, especially yeah. because I'm assuming they didn't contact you and let you know they were going to do it. No. So you just happened to come across. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I loved it. They sounded so good. I'm like, gosh, like, I mean, it almost looked at first, like looked like my own band because I had done a live stream performance, like sort of yeah. recently. I'm like, wow, it's like, we're the same, but so different. And that's exactly right. Like there was this parallel happening from across the world. That's amazing. I love that about the internet. That is super cool. Like yeah, that's the, that's the right way to use the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. neat to be connected to people. I, I really love that about the internet, actually. Like seeing data um, with where songs are being listened to. I'm like, wow, you know, like, they're listening to it in the Philippines, like 50 people today in the Amazing. Philippines, in Japan, in Brazil. I'm like, I don't know who these people are, but like, you know how it is. You create sonic vibration and it is out there, like going out yeah. of the universe from different points on the globe. And so interesting to see that. See that. Yeah. Data. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I would love that. So, so I know now you're you're doing a lot of uh, solo stuff, but but you sang with a band for, at least for a while. I love being a you know lead singer, and I love playing with other musicians. I just am kind of like running my own show, you know. Yes. Yeah, but I love to hire as many musicians as I can to be in my band when we play because it just does right by the composition and the whole arrangement. And I feel like for the audience to hear like the full glory of all the parts, like integrated yeah. and being together, like, whoa, like that just, that's a cool experience. Yeah, yeah, that would have to be. It'd have to be fun kind of putting that together too. I love that. I love that. And I, you know, my, the musicians who I like to play with, they're my friends. I like being with them. I love hearing their talents, like within the context of the songs. And I love the jokes in rehearsals and on stage and all of that stuff. That's a really fun part of um, songwriting and being an artist is like being with band members you love. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Do you play any instruments? I do. I do. Um, like on Murdergram, a lot of what you hear, I'm, you know, I'm playing a solid body electric ukulele. Oh, nice. 
on tunnel vision i play the acoustic uke um i play piano um and a little bit of rudimentary guitar random per percussion and like you know in other bands they've put me up to like some weird stuff where i you know i'll learn like a banjo part or an accordion part here and there yeah that's a lot of stuff i'm not like an expert at those last two at all <laughs> banjo is like a hard one to play yeah. yeah totally totally i i had to put little stickers on the fretboard to like remind myself of like where i could and could not go but that's just getting it done you know like yeah i'll play some banjo let's do it <laughs> i think banjo is hard hard on the fingers yeah yeah i mean they're freaking bluegrass players who blow my mind and they're incredible that is an art form unto itself yeah yeah we're uh, lucky enough my my wife has her great grandmother's banjo and i mean oh, it wow. looks brand new it's a, it's just it's amazing so she wanted to to learn to to play that she's pretty musical but it, it hurt her fingers too much but now uh, my stepson he picked it up and just he just goes he can just play so it's, it's pretty great. That is great. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty fun, uh, pretty fun stuff. I, I'm so envious of those that can not only play, but can figure out new instruments very quickly. I think that's neat. Me too. I am envious of those people as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you, are you a, a music reader or do you play by ear? Um, well, I guess it sort of depends. I'm a, a reader. Yeah. I like to read chord charts and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 if I played, that would probably be how, how I am, but I think it's, it's neat, uh, for those that are able to listen to something and then just figure it out. That's pretty neat too. Me too. Me too. I, yeah, I just admire those people so much so many incredible musicians like knowing all kinds of songs transposing keys yeah. on the spot like just amazing yeah just amazing do you um tour i know the last couple of years have been kind of rough but in normal times do you do you take a band out and uh, tour any i wish you know uh, i've done some regional touring and things in the past yeah. And um, while it would be really fun to tour, like you, I mean, it would be too, it would be kind of expensive. And, you know, also I have a, a job here in LA that I love and I have a really full life, you know, to be yeah. honest. And so like, I mean, if something really popped off and I had to like make a choice or say, <laughs> hey, like, can I take a little time off to go and do this special right. thing? Like, I could have that sort of conversation, but um, right now I just really enjoy being part of the local scene. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Is your is your job in the music industry? Yeah, yeah, my job's in the music industry. I've been doing music business administration for a long time, and it's like kind of the other side of my musical passion. Yeah, it's pretty great. So what does that entail? What does administration for music entail? Well, I um, work in music publishing. I will manage okay. requests, arrangement requests, uh, license requests, sync, stuff like that, um, book translations, and archiving, and a lot. rights management, and um, anything that comes through like the office of an artist, we take care of it. Yeah, it's pretty great. The uh, the photo rights management is that's a tricky job that you don't really think about, but it's a very important one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's cool. You know, you want to make cool stuff and you want to make sure you're not stepping on anybody's toes at the same time. Or <laughs> actually, like a better way to put it is like you want to bring everyone in. You want to bring yes. all the artists in and uh, make sure everybody feels taken care of and respected and a part of things. And that's like, you know, I'm an artist rights advocate and I, I'm passionate about that. Like loving, loving everybody who is a contributor. Yeah, that's terrific. That's terrific. Well, Holland, this has been great. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time. I'm a big fan of yours now. I love the music and the, and the sound of your voice. I just think it's, I, I would say lovely and it is at times, but it's kind of badass. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's great. I feel like you get me. <laughs> 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 so it's a couple of so things awesome. yeah a couple of things before we wrap up you know um anything else you're working on um that we can kind of keep an eye out for well the videos will be coming out yeah um it, this summer and stuff and i just want to like encourage people to go ahead and like do a little dance and enjoy <laughs> and like you know tap in take a listen and um and be in touch. There are ways to stay in touch, like on social media and stuff like that. I love that. I like being um, around the people and continuing conversations. Yeah, it's terrific. And that, that would kind of leads me to my next question. You know, where can we find Flashback and where can we find you on social media? I'm so excited to say that Flashback is like available anywhere you listen <laughs> to music on Spotify and um, Apple Music and Amazon and like wherever you get your stuff, it's around. And I'm really easy to find at Holland Greco. Um, you can Google me or on any social media yeah. site. That's my handle. Yeah. And your uh, website really well done, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I made that. Um, you know, when you're an indie artist, you you do all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a good job because the website, that's not an easy thing to put together, at least a good one. And, and I thought yours was really well done. Oh, that's nice. You know, learning curves. I would encourage any <laughs> artist or any person, as you know, with a podcast, I'm sure you've gone through tons of learning curves. Oh, yeah. It's been a, at times a slow process, but we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Holland, thank you so much and best of luck for whatever comes next. I can't wait to hear more from you. The nice thing is you've got enough out there that can kind of keep me busy for a while. That's so cool. Yeah, right on. It's been my pleasure to be here. So nice to hang out with you. Yeah, you have to come back. Next, next thing you have come out, you got to holler at me. We'll do it again. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, Holla, hold on one second. So that was the terrific Holland Greco, which is like the perfect musician name. I absolutely love that. Do yourself a favor, check out Flashback and some of her earlier work. You will absolutely love it. Um, especially in the earlier stuff, you like the misfits, really, really good terrific uh, music so check that out um if you haven't done so yet please help us out by subscribing to our youtube page meistercon pod you can also find all 400 plus episodes audio and video on our website meistercon.com really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in this week until next time bye everybody <laughs>